So what's next for VUCA? So for VUCA, we are trying to figure out ways to get innovative with our content. Um, right now, we have basically created um, almost 95% of medications that typically get dispensed at a community pharmacy. Actually, we have a specific video for that all the way down to the NDC level. But we want to we want to start expanding that. We want to start going into compounding medications um, because there's a huge opportunity there with uh, educating people about medications that are created specifically for them. And while that, that is the, that's a challenge all in itself to create a video for that one person, but um, but our goal is to try to get as close to possible as creating videos that can reach um, a certain set of people that are receiving compounded medications, uh, medications like uh, people that are taking care of pets and animals. Um, we want to get in the veterinary space. Uh, we have we don't really have any video content there. So for us, it's really about making sure we can innovate on our content um, and starting to f help the people that are still like like kind of left lost with like education and loss of where to find that education, uh, trying to be able to educate them on helping them be caregivers for themselves or for their pets. So I'm as as a person who has multiple pets and has delivered medications to multiple pets. What do you see that video like? Are you talking about because dosing is different, obviously? Mm -hmm. you know, how you know, wrapping it in peanut butter is not always a great option. So, like, what kind of things would you think about in terms of making a video for a dog or something like that? Well, obviously, the dog is not going to watch the video, so right? Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but you can do a filter and yeah. look like a dog's doing the video. I mean, my dog might actually watch the video. <laughs> My, my dog's cat super, would for sure. My dog's super lazy and loves sitting on the couch watching TV. So that's my cat. Yeah, I think there's uh, whether it's being able to give a specific dose, which we've already we've already looked at, like bringing in actual animals to like the studio and, and doing things like that. But whether it's teaching them how to like some tips and tricks on how to give doses, but I think just educating them on like what to expect, um, you know, what the medication that they're actually giving, because a lot of times people want to know like what am I giving my animal like what is this actually going to do to them right um you know how how harmful is it going to be to them so uh it's really very similar to people taking medications for humans um it's really just about educating them around all the different aspects that come along with actually um someone or, or an animal taking a medication which is why are they taking it what can you expect in terms of side effects potentially um what are some serious things to look out for and take action on if you actually see that thing um and then tips and tricks on how to administer it properly I had a dog with an osteosarcoma, which is a, basically a, a tumor in his, his femur. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, giving them medications like, you know, giving your dog Benadryl, okay, it's easy, doesn't really do a whole lot. But, like, d delivering, like, really crazy medications, like dogs show pain differently, they do all kinds of other stuff. So it's, it's interesting to see how that – I'll be – playing around with that as soon as it's available. So Yeah, a lot of community, yeah. a lot of community pharmacies mm -hmm. are getting into doing more pet right. meds. And, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of training programs now for pharmacists on pet meds and things like that. So, yeah, we got access to the Plums, um, you know, uh, library that is really helpful for pharmacists. So we're we're really going to try to go down that route and try to make sure we have that video content available for them. Um, you know, and in addition to the 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 content side of things, from a technology perspective, one thing I'm really passionate about is the voice space. Um, I think over the last year, you know, obviously a lot of things have changed and a lot of projects and traction got diverted to, you know, making sure people can retain their current kind of businesses and things like that. But voice, I think, is a, is a space that's heavily kind of was was catching a lot of traction prior to the pandemic. And I do believe is going to start to catch traction again um, as things kind of move back into normal, where people are going to start expecting using Siri, uh, the Apple Home or Alexa or, or Google Home, where they can ask it, you know, hey, um, refill, please refill my inhaler. And, you know, on the back end, that's going to have some connections back to Pioneer to say, hey, um, you know, this this, this patient wants his medication refilled. Uh, but in addition to that, I think they're going to start to ask, hey, can you tell me more about that inhaler I just picked up? So our, we want to have a, eventually our content to be able to be played on these devices, um, whether it's just the audio itself or whether it's an Echo Show device, which has a screen um, that's all voice activated, but still has a screen on there. We want to be able to have our video content be able to be played on that. So. Um, in terms of what's next for us is just making sure that we can have the technology and infrastructure in place to have content ready on these new devices that are starting to become um, a lot more prevalent. Yeah, the the worry about the Alexa app is that you're helping. <laughs> that, that, uh, yeah, that one day you they say, uh, hey, order my uh, inhaler, Alexa, and she says, hey, did you know you can get that from Amazon for 
And only two days? Well, that's where the branding and the relationships come into play. Um, and that's where I think independents are really going to shine because they're going to say, no, I don't want to get it from Amazon. I want to get it from, you know, um, Hobbs Pharmacy. So, you know, I think that's where the importance of the branding and the marketing is going to really have to have to shine. Um, because I do think similar to like, even if Apple wanted to do things like that, I mean, I, I still think even though these these companies create their own products, I think they're still vehicles of access. And I think that that's where brands are able to shine um, by utilizing these vehicles of access um, to get access to their brands. So um, so I hope, you know, community pharmacies will be able to um, market themselves and be able to com- like, you know, fight that sort of um you know, bigger players kind of coming in and trying to steal that market share. 